So let's look at what some of the features are in Echo. Echo includes a lot of interactivity, as I mentioned. This is an example of assessment and decision making. And this is a small screen video that I'm gonna talk through as the learner is going through the content. So you can see as the learner starts reading the content, she's learning about a patient who has sepsis, follows the directions in the blue hotspot to click each hotspot and do the assessment. Just as if you were the nurse going into the patient's room after you got report, and you are gonna do a quick focused assessment on the patient. So you're getting some information, you're learning about her neuro status, her pulmonary status, her respiratory rate, what her skin looks like, and doing an assessment much like you would do in the unit as you come in and get report. So it gives you just a little bit of information. And then it's gonna go on after you've done your assessment and it's gonna give you an opportunity for decision-making. And it's con this section is going to present it to you in an SBAR, the Situation, Background, Assessment, and Recommendation. So you'd read about the situation, the background, the assessment, and then it's going to give you three choices for a recommendation to consult with the provider. The first one you can see on the screen as they're reading the assessment is I'd like to obtain a consult with nephrology to assess possible kidney damage. The next one is get a central line and insert a catheter. And the third one is to implement the three-hour sepsis bundle. Based on your assessment, what's the most important one? And so the learner's kind of clicking back and forth and decides that implementing the sepsis bundle is the right one, and it's correct. And then the course provides the didactic information about why it's important. So it allows you to do just what you do in the unit. You come on, you get report, you have to make a decision. And then it goes on and it gives you some more information about the provider orders and why the three-hour bundle would be important. It really mimics what you do as a nurse every day. And I've had learners tell me that one of the things that they liked about ECHO was that assessment piece where they come in and they have to click all the hotspots because it tells, it shows them exactly what they do in the patient's room. And what they learned from this part in ECHO is that they learn to not only just assess the patient, but to assess the IV pumps and the machines, but to focus on the patient first and then assess the whole room. So it's a great, um, simulation type learning within an interactive e-learning course. ECHO is also built on a concept called Try Then Learn. And in Try Then Learn, it's really important that it, the learner understands what this is. So I'm gonna let it click through this and I'm gonna tell you about Try Then Learn. What Try Then Learn does is it presents some content to the, the learner and then it allows the learner to make decisions about that content without really having the full knowledge that they need. This one's about arterial monitoring and which patients might need it. And so it gives the, the, the learner an opportunity to read about a patient who has a broken leg and a right wrist and do they need arterial pressure monitoring? The answer is no. And then it gives the rationale as to why. Then they're gonna go back and they're gonna assess another patient. Mr. Land, is gonna have post, it has immediate post aortic valve replacement. Does he need an art line? Probably. So they check that one and yes, and it gives him the rationale as to why he needed his art line. And then the third patient comes up and this patient is on vasoactive medication and has a stroke and he's hypotensive. So they decide he probably needs it as well and they submit. So it gives the rationale again as to why he needs the arterial line. And then it goes on to present the didactic content as to why an arterial pressure line might be needed after it presents another question. So it's going to give them the three main indications for arterial line insertion. And your learners might be thinking, well, they didn't teach me that yet. Why do I have to answer this question? They didn't teach me. I don't understand this but that's the try then learn. It allows your learners to make a mistake or not, as this one got it correct, in a safe environment. And we, all, we know that when we make a mistake, sometimes we remember it more than when we got it right the first time. So try then learn is an interactive approach that provides variety in learning. And it also provides a very similar environment to what the nurse is presented with, when they go into a patient's room, they are presented with information. They have to make decisions about it. They may not know everything there is to know about it, 
But then once they get done doing their decision making, they can go back and learn. And so try then learn as an approach. As an educator, you definitely want to tell your learners about Many nurses who've been taught in traditional nursing schools are presented with didactic content, and then they have to make decisions about the didactic content. That's different in ECHO. They are presented with situations where decision-making is necessary, and then the rationale is presented with the why, the why behind the, with the didactic knowledge. So just make sure you tell your learners about it and prepare them for a try-then-learn approach. This is another example of an interactive element in ECHO that provides an opportunity for simulation. It gives the nurse the opportunity to practice raising and lowering the transducer to make sure they get it to the right area. As the head of the bed goes up, the transducer is too low, and you can see the readout accuracy is incorrect here at, at being, reading too high. And then they can actually go ahead and raise the transducer, and they can watch the readout accuracy, and they have a laser level to make sure they get to the flebostatic access where the level of the transducer needs to be. So this is another interactive element that shows you the nice ability to practice some skills within ECHO, the ability to make a mistake in a safe environment again. And then they can take this knowledge to the bedside where they can practice it with a preceptor. One of the other examples of information that is included in ECHO is some low volume, high risk content. This is on necrotizing fasciitis. And I'm gonna give you fair warning that if you have a weak stomach, on the third slide during this video, there is kind of a gross image that you might not wanna see. So just fair warning, but I do want you to show the reality of ECHO and what we have included in it. So I'm gonna press the video. And this, you can see the learner is learning about the etiology and pathophysiology of necrotizing fasciitis and what some of the signs and symptoms might be. And then they can go over and they can assess this discoloration on the patient's arm that looks a bit odd and go on to learn a little bit more about it. And now we're going to find the signs and symptoms at 24 hours, two to three days, and four to five days. And it's the four to five days part where you might not want to look at it. But you can see the changes in the arm and how this patient's arm is progressing and getting worse. And then at the four to five day mark, you're going to see what happens to a patient who has necrotizing fasciitis and see that the patient's arm had to be debrided because the, the infection had traveled up the fascia and way in deep into the wound. So this is another example of a low volume, high risk content that is presented in the course. And it's nice because, you know, one of the really hard things to teach sometimes is that low volume, high risk problem that presents itself. And if the nurse misses that very early stage, kind of just reddened rash, but the pain is out of control in necrotizing fasciitis, then the patient might end up where they were four to five days later. So it's important to be able to teach that stuff realistically in a safe environment again. I also want to show you some of the tools that are available inside the module. You can see over here there's a tool drop down, and we have anatomy and physiology. We have resources that include a variety of handouts. There's a glossary and a scorecard, which is where your exam scores are tracked, and feedback from your exam, so the rationales for the different answers. And then there's a help, which shows the navigation of the course. The anatomy and physiology section of the resources is a comprehensive content that's available about the A&P. It's optional content. Your learners need to know they don't need to do this. It's not tracked in the LMS and it is not contact hours. But it's a really neat feature that I wanna show you because when you go into the tools dropdown and you click open the A&P, you get some really great information that helps you understand the physiology and pathophysiology of many of the diseases and disorders that we're taking care of in the ICU and PCU. So this learner is gonna look at the circulatory of the pulmonary system, and it provides a nice image, um, and then talks about the network of the pulmonary arteries and what the pulmonary arteries do. And then as they click down and go on, talks about the pulmonary system pressures, which might be helpful if the nurse was learning about PA catheters. And then as you're learning about gas exchange, this shows you deep down in the lungs, the process of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange at the alveolar level. 
So it's just really nice extra content to get a visual of what's happening inside the lung to help explain a little bit better the content they may already be re reading and learning about in ECHO. There's also the preceptor tools that are in the resources and the, in the tools dropdown. Each module has its own preceptor guide. So there's 18 preceptor guides for ICU and 17 preceptor guides for the PCU one. This one happens to be the hemodynamic monitoring for module one. And it shows the echo assignments that are covered. So the basics of hemodynamic monitoring system, arterial pressure monitoring, and central venous catheters. And then it provides a list of taking it to the bedside activities for the preceptor to talk to the nurse who's taking echo about the hospital protocols, procedures, or orders for the following things, like where are the hemodynamic monitoring kits kept? And how frequently do we change tubing and flush on hemodynamic monitoring? And what about dressing change? What do we do for that? And what happens with an occluded central venous catheter? And then it also provides a set of skills that the preceptor should facilitate the nurse's performance of, like performing an Allen's test prior to radial artery puncture, or setting up and zeroing the transducer and flushing and um, performing the dynamic response test. All of this information is included in ECHO, but this then provides the preceptor with the information about what they should cover at the bedside. When I was an educator using ECHO, I remember my nurses who were preceptors always coming to me and saying, what are they learning in ECHO? What are they learning in ECHO? I want to make sure I cover what they're learning in ECHO. And that's why we came up with the preceptor tools, was to provide that bridge between ECHO and what's happening at the bedside to help integrate the two pieces of content. The glossary terms are linked in the content. So if you watch here, you'll see that the diffuse axonal injury is a glossary term linked and when clicked, it comes up. And so the learner has the quick ability to see what's happening in the with different glossary terms. And there's another one down here at the bottom, intracranial pressure. So whenever you see an underlined word in echo, that means it's linked in the glossary and provides a little bit extra information, which is it's just a nice feature. We really like that. That's a new addition to this latest update to echo. The other thing that is included in ECHO is the ability to evaluate your learning. As an educator, most educators have a competency assessment of knowledge usually done with an exam. So exams are provided for the learner at the assignment level in ECHO. It enables a more granular data on learner response. So the educator can really see, you know, how, what are they studying and what are they learning? And most assignment exams have 15 or less questions. The exams require an 80% pass rate to get the CE for that assignment. And exam questions focus on application of the content. They don't focus on recall. So they really focus on, you know, what would you do types of scenarios as opposed to what is sepsis. So it gives a little bit more information and helps apply the, the learning in the knowledge category of your competency. There's also pop-up rationale for incorrect responses to provide immediate feedback. That was a request from our learners that we added in this last edition to ECHO as well. And the multiple select questions also include the number of correct responses expected. So if it is a multiple select question, which you saw one of those in the demo, it'll say select three responses or select two responses. It'll tell you how many that you need to select because we know that learners are overwhelmed coming in. New nurses are overwhelmed coming into the ICU. They just are. And the less cognitive load that we can put on their brains because they're already so overwhelmed with the environment and everything they need to learn, the better it is for them. So this is one little piece of reducing cognitive load that we've applied in ECHO is to give them the number of responses that are correct so they're not just guessing and clicking buttons and they're actually trying to think about the answers that they need to apply. In summary, I just want to, you to know that we are here to help you with ECHO, whatever you need. If we can help you implement it, if we can help you decide if it's what you need for you to continue your self-study and your learning, we're here. Please contact us at info at aacn.org. My name again is Julie Miller, and I've been pleased to present this content for you today. Have a good day.